Good morning, everybody. My name is Eric Lawrence. I'm a program manager on the Internet Explorer team at Microsoft. I've worked on IE uh, since IE7. Uh, but here I'm today going to talk about Fiddler. Uh, Fiddler is a project I've been working on, a side project I've been doing for about eight years since back when I was on the uh, Office Online website team, and we needed a way to debug our website. Um, just a quick show of hands. Did anybody go to PDC and see my talk there about Fiddler? Good. All new. Uh, how many people here have used Fiddler before? OK, a good number. Uh, so, so advanced web debugging was the right title for this session. Uh, and so the reason, actually, this is a mini session. So I'm going to have to blow through content pretty quickly, unfortunately. It's a 25-minute session. Um, but at PDC, I had a really interesting experience, because I had a room with 200-ish people. Uh, and, and of the people there, they had all used Fiddler before. But about five minutes into the talk, I started talking about a pretty basic feature. And I said, you know, how many people have used this? And one guy in the back raised his hand. And I said, wow, you know, people are really using Fiddler in a very shallow way. And I really want to get them to sort of use more of the power of Fiddler to take advantage of it and, and make it more useful for their goals and so forth as, as either website designers or, you know, Silverlight programmers, or, or in that case, you know, um, I believe that there were a lot of people who were using uh, WCF and other technologies that are based around HTTP. And so my, my session today is mostly going to focus on sort of going beyond viewing of traffic and going into scenarios that uh, web developers have come to me and said, hey, it would be great if Fiddler supported this or that, and uh, have been built into the product over the years. And so certainly if any of you have given me feedback in the past about this that led to new features, thank you very much. Uh, and hopefully I'll get some feedback about things that ought to be in future versions of Fiddler here today as well. So the first thing I wanted to start to talk about today is traffic capture, the, the very most basic you know, aspect of Fiddler. And so just to understand, and, and this is pretty important because for a lot of people, Fiddler kind of acts like magic, right? You start it up, and then your web traffic just magically appears, and then you close it down, and, and, and you, know, you stop getting traffic. And the problem with that is, is that as you start to do more advanced things with Fiddler, it becomes kind of important to understand how Fiddler truly works. And the way that Fiddler works is it's a web proxy. It just sits on your local machine. And when it starts up, it tells WinINet. It says, hey, you know, please act as, act, you know, have me as your system proxy. And it'll chain to any upstream proxy that was there previously. And this is actually very useful because WinINet is the network stack that's either used by most of the applications on the system, so Internet Explorer or Office or whatnot, or other applications on the system tend to look to WinINet and say, hey, I need a proxy. Do you have one for me? And so most applications will actually directly respect the WinINet proxy settings, and so Fiddler magically gets connected. For applications which don't, for instance, Firefox, a different approach is needed. The other thing that you need a different approach for is if you want to debug across devices. And this is a scenario that's particularly important and growing in importance for people that want to do things like develop on mobile phones, where it's actually pretty hard to get a full-featured HTTP debugger down onto the phone. But with Fiddler as a proxy, basically you can debug any device that supports an HTTP proxy. All you have to do is point that device at the Fiddler endpoint. So usually it's the name of the machine that's running it on port 8888. Um, or it could be any other port that you select. And so this is useful also if you want to debug across a client. So if you want to debug a Mac machine or a Linux machine, you can't run Fiddler on those. Fiddler is only it's a .NET application. It's only available for Windows. But you can point these other devices and computers at Fiddler and debug your traffic. Now, one of the things I mentioned was that you know, Firefox, by default, doesn't pick up the WinINet proxy settings. Well, you, know, you can easily reconfigure your proxy settings in Firefox every time you start and stop Fiddler. Um, and, and about five years ago, I went to the Firefox guys, and they said, hey, it would be really great if you respected the WinINet proxy settings, and so Fiddler would work automatically. And they said, well, you know, submit the patch. Uh, and at the time, I, I was pretty busy and didn't have time to submit the patch. But uh, about a year ago, I actually released what's called Fiddler Hook for Firefox. And what Fiddler Hook does is it just installs a little simple plugin at the bottom of Firefox where uh, you can select whether or not you want Firefox to automatically chain to Fiddler, just like uh, IE does. Um, or you can force traffic to Fiddler. The interesting thing about this case is if you say force traffic to Fiddler and Fiddler isn't running, you're going to get a proxy server missing error from Firefox. Uh, or you can actually fully turn it off. And so if you're using Firefox for other things and don't want to debug traffic, you can, you can uh, uh, select that option as well. And so this is available for uh, Firefox 3.0 and above, and it works fine in, in, in 3.5 and 3.6 and the alpha and so forth. So, OK, we've got the, the basic set of traffic capture. You're running Fiddler on localhost. You're collecting data from either a, a remote device or a phone or a computer. Um, but there's also another scenario, which is traffic import. And this is interesting because sometimes someone else has the traffic that you need, and you want to debug it with Fiddler. You want to look at it inside Fiddler. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is Fiddler Cap. Virtually nobody has heard of Fiddler Cap in the, in the general set of people I've asked. Has anybody here used Fiddler Cap before? 
Okay, we've got maybe, maybe one. Uh, so Fiddler Cap is basically Fiddler's lesser known little brother. And Fiddler Cap came out of the, the uh, Internet Explorer 7 beta when we were actually trying to get uh, you know, site compatibility feedback from a lot of users. And they'd come to us and they'd say, well, you know, my site doesn't work. It's not private or sensitive or anything, but it's on you know, a network that you guys don't have reachability to. Um, so how do I debug this? Do I send you a video or something? And we said, no, no, you just, you know, you take Fiddler and you run it. And, you know, some of them were kind of like, oh, geez, there's a lot of clicking and options and I don't really know what I'm doing. And so the notion of Fiddler Cap is to build basically a lightweight version of Fiddler that is essentially very easy to use. You push start, you do whatever's busted, you push stop, uh, and then you push save. And then that will actually generate a, a session archive zip file, uh, which allows you to debug your traffic uh, uh, remotely, so I can send you know a, a, a non-technical user to fiddlercap.com. There's a set of step-by-step -step instructions that basically say you know just that: push one, go do whatever's broken, and so forth. And they can send you back a SAS file, which you can reload into Fiddler and examine, and you can see the web experience that this user had, even if you didn't have access to the servers in question, uh, even if it was only specific to their machine. You know, maybe their DNS is corrupted. I've seen cases where we use this to debug uh, a case where somebody had like uh, a poison DNS server set up inside Windows and so forth. And you can actually all, see all of this in the traffic capture. Now, the next thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, a lot of people yesterday in the, in the keynote noticed IE9 has a new feature in the developer tools for network capture. And so I saw some tweets yesterday of, like, they've baked Fiddler into IE9. And, you know, it's a great feature. I love it. It's really, you know, it's, it's time for IE to have built-in feature uh, for, for network analysis. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. You just push F12 and click the network tab. But it is a lightweight feature. It doesn't have the full feature set of Fiddler. It integrates very nicely with Internet Explorer, but doesn't support the range of scenarios across browsers and so forth. But one of the things that's important, and John Seidel will be talking about this in the next session, is that the Network tab can actually export its traffic. And the, the Network tab can export its traffic inside an XML format. So I'm going to just show you really quick, uh, flip over to Fiddler. And you can actually load the traffic out of a previously captured uh, network capture from Internet Explorer's developer tools. And so you'll see that Fiddler finds, uh, basically it'll find all of the traffic uh, that was previously captured and reload it and allow you to examine it. Now, one important caveat about the export format is this is, a, this is an export format that uh, is working on being standardized across uh, different browsers, and they don't actually support uh, 